I'm Arden Hagley. I'm a fellow in the Society of Fellows in the Humanities at Columbia. And I'm also a lecturer in the English department at Columbia. I got my PhD in English and Comparative Literature in the Department of English at Columbia. So my dissertation was called Reading Autopsy, the Medical Practice of Romantic Literature. And basically what I was focusing on is how literature and medicine were interacting at the end of the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century. And looking at how the two cultures, literature and medicine, were interacting not just in the level of symbol or in the level of metaphor, but actually on the level of literary form. So I was taking actually four different fields from medicine as case studies, and then looking at different literary genres and literary forms and seeing how formally the two disciplines were interacting. I became interested in the topic of my dissertation um, in my study of Romanticism at the University of Toronto. And then when I came to Columbia, um, I realized that what I had learned at Toronto, which was that medicine was integral to the study of Romanticism, and this was through working with Professor Alan Buell, um, it actually was somewhat different. At Columbia, when I took a course in Romantic Poetry and then a seminar in Romantic Poetry and Prose, I learned that writers like Wordsworth and Coleridge were actually very resistant to medicine in some of what they were writing. They were saying things like, we murder to dissect. Um, writers like Keats had actually trained in medicine but then abandoned it. And even in texts like Frankenstein where you know, you think that medicine is so influential for the text. The writer, um, Mary Shelley, actually displays a lot of ambivalence about the role of the biological sciences. And so here, um, I was left with this question, like how important is medicine and literature in the Romantic period, and how closely are the two fields intertwined? Right now, I'm working on turning my dissertation into a book. And in the process of working on literature and medicine and how they interact formally, I came to realize that actually the romantics are engaging with the same kinds of questions that literary critics are dealing with right now. That is, how we read. So um, we have this idea now called symptomatic reading, that we're reading a text for the symptoms that are contained within the text. And in, pre in the present day, we've developed all kinds of challenges to this, like surface reading, reparative reading. And what I really wanted to do, and what I'm now doing in turning the dissertation into a book, is to give a much longer history of symptomatic reading and say, actually, it's rooted in the biological sciences, it's rooted in the Romantic period, it's rooted in the formal interaction of literature and medicine. So right now, I'm also looking at some future projects. I have two articles in mind. The first is an article about Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights as a shaping text for Canadian literature, which seems a little unconventional, but in fact, I think that this is something that can really be shown to have a lot of influence throughout Canadian literature. Um, the second is an article on bitumen, um, or also known as oil sands, um, in the poetry of Byron and Shelley, and then how the British imperial space then comes to shape how the tar sands in Alberta are represented and how fracking and tar sands excavation are represented. So those are the two article projects. And then finally, the second book project is called The Coded Fragment, and I'm looking at how different texts from the Romantic period are predecessors for digital literary modes like hyperlinks, lexias, and other forms of digital literature. Currently I'm teaching a course in the core curriculum at Columbia that's for freshman students called Literature Humanities and this is a year-long course that all students are required to take um, and the course considers literature in the Western canon from Homer to Toni Morrison. And so right now we're reading Genesis in the Hebrew Bible and next week we'll be doing Herodotus. And really what I want to cultivate in my classroom is a sense of curiosity, a sense of engagement, and really allowing students to have a kind of flexibility and interest and allow the lessons that they learn in the classroom to inform their intellectual life going forward no matter which discipline they end up working in. So far, I've really enjoyed my experience at the Society of Fellows, and I've particularly loved getting to know Carmel. Her work is also in the same historical period as mine. She also works on romanticism, and she also has a medical bent to the kind of work that she does. But 
obviously her focus is in a different field. It's in music. And so she and I will be collaborating next spring to put together a conference on sound and music in the English Romantic period, 1770 to 1840. So I'm very excited to work on that with her. And also in talking to Carmel, um, I came to realize that one of the great things about the Society of Fellows is not just that people have very exciting scholarly interests, but also that everyone has um, an interesting activity that they do outside of their scholarly life. So we learned that both of us are performing music and per performing music in the Romantic period. She on violin and I on piano. So um, this has just been one of the wonderful interactions I've had with another fellow.